Northwoods, great to see you, man. It's so good to be together. First, uh, not the first Sunday, but the second Sunday of January. Great to be back together. I hope you had a great holiday uh, with your family. I had a great time with mine. We were here in Peoria on Christmas Day, watched my beloved Packers get a huge win. And then uh, we traveled down to Chattanooga to see my wife's family for a little while. And so we've had a good time, but I am excited to be back here. And listen, we got some things to celebrate. Because at the Christmas production, let me just share a couple things with you. We had 21,922 people attend. That's amazing. That's with a service canceled. And there were 1,027 people who indicated they opened their hearts to Jesus. Come on. That's incredible. I I don't know. It's just amazing what the Lord does every year. And again, I just want to say thank you to those of you who were praying, because again, they got, God does amazing things through prayer, and he did amazing things again through this, uh, this production, and man, I'm just so, again, thank you, Lord, for what you've done, and if you're one of those people that surrendered your life to Jesus, and maybe you're here with us, man, we're excited to have you here with us. Keep pressing in uh, to the Lord. Get connected here at Northwoods, and uh, let's continue to grow in our relationship with Jesus. You know, over this next month, We're going to be talking a lot about prayer. Jesus said that my house will be called a house of prayer. And it's my desire that not only this house, our church, that would be called a house of prayer, but that each of our individual homes, we would be able to say my house is a house of prayer. Of prayer because you know I really believe and I I believe the Lord put this on my heart last year that everything we want to see happen in this church whether there's more people come to know Jesus more people set free well everything we want to see happen a greater release of the Holy Spirit's power in this place is going to happen because it's the fruit of our prayers it's gonna be our prayers that energize all that God does through this church and I want to say the same thing for you and your home There are many things that God, I should say, desires. I'm not saying wants, because I'm not saying that God just gives you whatever you want through prayer. But I'm saying there are desires that God has placed on your heart. The Bible says that God gives us the desires of our hearts. Sometimes he places desires on our hearts. And I just believe that the desires he's placed in your heart, many times those seeing those come to fruition are going to be on the other side of a deeper prayer life with him it's going to be your prayers that energize what god does through your life and so you know we're going to talk a lot about prayer in this series and you know when it comes to prayer studies show us that prayer is the most popular spiritual discipline amongst christians and that over half of Americans say they pray every day. But when it gets down to it, I found in my own life, and I found this to be true through just talking with multiple people over the years, that many struggle just knowing how to pray. Like, just help me know where to begin. I know I I see the value in it. I, I, I know I should be doing it. You know, I'll throw up a few prayers here and there, but many of us struggle just knowing how to pray. And so in this series, I want to give you four different prayer patterns that are going to help you know how to pray and give you a pattern to guide you as you pray. Because I've just found that when I have a pattern, it's kind of like a track for my mind to run on. You ever been in that place where you sit down to pray and it's like, okay, um, yeah, Lord, I, uh, did you keep my, uh, keep my kids healthy? And, uh, oh yeah, I forgot. Like, when, did they have a doctor's appointment coming up? Where's my phone? Um, it's like, when's that coming up? And, oh, shoot, I got this on my phone, too. I got to connect with this person. Yeah, okay. Uh, wait a minute. Okay, so, Lord, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, what was I saying there? Um, yeah, just give us a great day. And, uh, man, I got so much stuff. Okay, all right, see you later, right? That's how it goes sometimes, right? You get there, your mind runs all over the place. And so I've just found that many times when you have a pattern or a track to run on, it just helps you to stay more focused as you pray. And so that's what I talk about, four different prayer patterns. And you know, sometimes we need inspiration when it comes to prayer, but you know what? Sometimes we just need some information. And so I want to give you four patterns that come straight out, straight out of the Bible that you can put to use in your prayer life. And I was introduced to these four prayer patterns that I'm going to be sharing with you throughout this series by Pastor Larry Stockstill, who I'm excited is actually going to be here with us next Sunday 
to teach us one of those prayer patterns. And I believe, because this has been true for me, that if you will lean into some of these prayer patterns and make these a part of your prayer life, it will take your prayer life to a new level because it's, it's done that for me. It doesn't matter whether you consider yourself a rookie when it comes to prayer or whether you consider yourself a seasoned veteran. These patterns will help you. So this series is going to be highly practical that every single one of us will be able to put to use immediately. And so this morning, I'm gonna throw a lot at you, so I wanna encourage you to take notes, make use of the sermon notes in, in the app so you don't miss anything, those will be in there as well. And uh, again, so I want you to take notes and have these with you because these are gonna be patterns you use in your prayer time and it will help you. And let me add one other thing here. Okay, over this next couple of weeks, we're gonna talk about how to pray. Okay, I can show you how to pray. There's lots of people that can show you how to pray. But only you can make prayer a priority in your life. Anybody can teach you how to pray. Lots of people can teach you how to pray. But only you can make prayer a priority in your life. It reminds me of the most difficult machine in the weight room at the gym. Do you know what the most difficult machine in the weight room at the gym is? It's the front door. The most difficult thing is getting through that front door, isn't it, right? If you can just get there and show up, you've done the most difficult part. It's just getting there and showing up. And it's the same with prayer. The most difficult thing about prayer is not learning how to pray. It's showing up and doing it. And only you can do that. So come on now, I wanna encourage you, make prayer a priority, and I'll show you how, but you show up with the Lord. So today we're gonna start with the Lord's prayer pattern. This is a pattern I've probably used the most over the last two years in my life, and we get this pattern from Jesus himself. You can find it in Matthew chapter six and Luke 11. We'll look at it in Matthew. Jesus said in Matthew six, verses nine through 13, he said, this then is how you should pray. Again, super practical. I love that Jesus was practical. This is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, that's a famous prayer. Many of you have heard it, recite it word for word. You know, you see it in movies. One of my favorite movies is Friday Night Lights. And I remember before the football teams would take the field, they'd be reciting the Lord's Prayer. Now, it's not wrong to pray this verse verbatim, okay? There's, you're, you're never going to go wrong praying Scripture. But I believe that Jesus intended to show us not exactly what words to say, but to give us a model or a pattern to guide us as we pray. I want you to notice he didn't say, this is what to pray. He said, this is how you should pray. So not what, this is how you should pray. So let's dig into this. And I wanna show you kind of the five parts we find here in this prayer pattern that you can use to guide your prayer time. So here's part one, praise. Okay, praise. He said, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So you can just break that down and say, you know what? I'm gonna start my prayer time by praising his name. That term hallowed comes from the same root word for holy. Hallowed means to be set apart or sanctified, which means God's name is not to be mixed up with anyone else's name. His name is to be set apart. You know, you hear athletes today talk about put some respect on that, on that man's name, right? Listen, put some respect on God's name. His name is like no other person's name, not to be mixed up with anybody else. His name carries weight. And when we look in scripture, we find that when God wanted to reveal more about his character, he did it through a name. In fact, he has many names. And if you remember, we did a series on the names, seven names of God this past summer. And so I'm gonna put these up on the screen. Uh, they'll be up there, the seven names of God. I, I wanna encourage you, this is something you can take into your prayer time with you. I, I have these every morning. I just, I almost snow them by heart now as I pray. So when you start in, the, in this section of praising God, you can just walk through every single one of those. Because he's, listen, he's the Lord, our provider. He's the Lord that heals. He's our, he's our banner, that means he's my victory. 
He's our peace. He's our shepherd. He's our righteousness. He's the Lord who is there. So you take that list, and just to help guide you as you start praising, you say, Lord, I praise you because you're my provider. I thank you that you provide for all of my needs. Lord, I praise you because you're a healer. You heal all of our diseases and sicknesses. Lord, I, I praise you because you're my banner, a focal point in the midst of my battles that encourages me. I thank you that you're my victory. Lord, I praise you because you're my peace. I praise you because you're my shepherd who leads me and guides me. I praise you because you're my righteousness. I praise you because you are here with me. You're there with me, Lord. Wherever I go, I praise you. You just take those names and you just begin praising his name. And yes, I see up there, yes, the Lord, I actually changed it. There was a typo. I just saw it. The Lord is peace. Okay. So I like to start my prayer time by praising God's name. And it sounds like what I just shared with you. So you start with praising him. And sometimes here, there's days that I'll just turn on worship music and I'll bring up the lyrics on my phone and I'll just sing and praise him. So you start with praise, okay? Then we get to part two, and this is surrender. So you start with praise, then you move to surrender. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Now, when Jesus said your kingdom come, there's an element of looking ahead to the coming kingdom of God. But I think it also speaks to the expansion of his kingdom here and now. Now, let me ask you, where is his kingdom now? Real simple answer would be wherever the king reigns. So if he reigns in your life, that means the kingdom is in you. And so when we talk about the expansion of his kingdom, in a sense, we can say, expand the kingdom in me and through me. Release the fruit of your kingdom in me, the character of your kingdom in me, the power of the kingdom through me. Your will be done. That speaks to the idea of walking in his perfect plan for your life. So how are those things going to happen? I believe they happen as we surrender daily to the Holy Spirit's lead. So we start with praise and then we move to surrender and we surrender to his lead. You know, many times we think that becoming more like Jesus in our life is about just working harder at it, you know? I got some things I'm gonna change, I'm just gonna start working harder. It's like the story of the man who was told that if he worked the very hardest he could, he'd become rich. The hardest work he knew was digging holes. So he said about digging holes in his backyard. He didn't get rich, but he got a backache. Some of you got a backache in your relationship with Jesus because you're working so hard. Like, if I just work harder. No, listen, the secret to becoming more like Jesus is not working harder. It's learning to surrender to the Holy Spirit's lead daily. And there's, I'll give you three scriptures that I usually walk through in this part. We taught each of these passages last year in our series on the Holy Spirit. So when I get to surrender every day, it's just, I've just I, I pray through three different scriptures and I'll give them to you. You can use these in your prayer time as well. I pray through the fruit of the spirit. So they'll put that up on the screen. That's out of, out of Galatians 5, 22 through 23. So I, in the surrender portion, I just come to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I surrender to your leadership in my life today and I yield to you. And I pray that you would release fresh fruit in my life today. Fresh love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And there might be days where as I'm praying through it, I'm like, yeah, patience, man. Lord, I, would you just release a greater level of patience in my life today? There's days where, there's just days where one of those words just really resonates with my heart. And I might stop there for a minute. So you pray through the fruit of the Spirit. And then you can get, I like to go through the lamps of the Spirit. In Isaiah 11, 2, it talks about the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, fear of the Lord. We did a message on the lamps of the Spirit last year. We used the menorah up here and lit candles, if you remember that. So you could take, you could take all seven of those and pray through those. And I'll kind of show you how I do that. So Spirit of the Lord. I just surrender afresh to you. You are the Spirit of the Lord. I surrender to your leading. You get to wisdom. Holy Spirit, I pray you would release a greater level of wisdom in my life today. 
Help me to make accurate, long-term decisions. I go to understanding. Would you release greater level of understanding into your perfect plan for my life? Would you counsel me today in the path you'd have me walk? Would you counsel me as I'm having conversations with people? Would you counsel me in what to say today? Wisdom, understanding, counsel, might. Would you remove discouragement from my life and just release boldness in me? There's also the spirit of, of knowledge. So I pray there, would you give me no, greater knowledge of who Jesus is? I also pray there, and I encourage you to do this because I've just found in my life and even stepping into leading this church that there are some places, I, I have some experience in some things, but there are some places where I have little experience. And there's places in your life where maybe at your job, wherever you're at, parenting, whatever, you just say, I don't have a lot of experience here. You know what? You just ask the Holy Spirit, would you give me knowledge in areas where I have little or no experience? That, so just at a gut level, I know in that moment, this is what I'm to do. He can do that in your life. So knowledge and then fear of the Lord, that's integrity. Would you make me a person of integrity? Help me to walk in integrity today. So I pray through the fruit of the Spirit, the lamps of the Spirit, and then the gifts of the Spirit. They'll put those up as well. We did an entire message on the gifts of the Spirit last year. I'm not gonna walk through each of these. Again, you could do a message on each of the gifts of the Spirit, but if you wanna go back, we did a whole message on it last year titled The Gifts of the Spirit. But I will say this. Okay, sometimes when we talk about the gifts of the Spirit, we talk about them as if certain people own them. Well, this person has the gift of prophecy. Uh, this person has the gift of healing. And the reality is that there are certain people that may operate at a higher level in some of these gifts, but nobody owns these gifts. They're the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He owns them. And if he lives in you, he does if you've surrendered your life to Jesus, that means at any moment of need, he can release any one of those gifts through your life. And so I pray every morning, Holy Spirit, almost every morning, would you activate your gifts in me? And I pray that in every moment of need today, you would release the gift that's needed. And again, the gifts are others focused. It's gifts are for uh, ministering to others. Listen, if you begin to pray through those scriptures, you just kind of use those lists as you're praying. I'm telling you, you're surrendering to the Spirit's lead. And it's gonna be amazing what he does through your life. So you start with praise. You move to surrender. And then part three is you, get, you come to the needs. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, we probably don't need a lot of coaching here because this is the part we're good at. We know how to bring our needs to the Lord. But I think it's interesting, I love this, that he used the phrase, give us today our daily bread. Daily bread. I think the Lord's trying to teach us that we walk in daily dependence with him. Walking with him means walking one day at a time. I want you to think about it in biblical times. They didn't have Ziploc bags sitting around to put their bread in when they're done with it for a day. Like you, you make bread one day, and if it hangs out to the next day, it's crusty bread, okay? So you got fresh bread one day, and if you want fresh bread the next day, you make it the next day. And so it's, there's this daily, um, boom, it's daily. Same with Jesus. It's daily dependence on him. He gives us what we need as we meet with him day by day. You know, it, it is not like we go to God and say, hey, God, here's what I need for the next month. I'll meet with you on the first of every month. You give me what I need for the next month. I'm good. That's not how it works. It's daily dependence on him. You know, when I was in Chattanooga with my wife and my family over Christmas, we went to Costco with my mother-in-law. And I don't have a Costco membership, but we went, we went with her. And man, you walk out of there like 75 rolls of toilet paper. There's a box of 72 eggs. A, you know, a bag of carrots like this big. Like you walk out of there, it's like, man, I'm set for the month. I don't gotta show up back here for a while. Listen, God's not a Costco God. It's not that I just show up, you know, one time and say, okay, give me what I need for the next month. And then it's like, all right, I'll see you next month. No, it's... I walk in daily dependence with him. He gives me what I need. He gives us what we need as we walk with him one day at a time. And often we're so anxious because we're living out in the future of 
what if land. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, God's saying, I want you to focus on today. I'll give you what you need today. You know what? When tomorrow comes, I'll give you what you need then. So what do you need for today? Bring your needs to him. Now, sometimes I find that as I'm praying about my needs, I constantly can tend to go towards the future. And it's certainly not wrong to pray about the future. But it's here that I've just learned, you know what, that I'm going to thank the Lord. That when I get to that time in the future that's on my mind, he's going to meet me there. And what I need will be there in the moment. I thank you that you're gonna provide and there will be grace to meet me in the moment. I thank you that I don't have to fear and worry today because you're gonna be there again tomorrow. So what do you need today? Maybe you need strength. What do you need? Maybe you have a situation facing you, you don't know what to do. What do you need? Maybe you need provision. Maybe you need a car, I, I, whatever it is. Bring it to him. He wants to hear your needs. He knows what you need. Bring it to him. And it's here that I also sometimes, if there's a need for someone else, you might release that to him as well. So start with praise, move to surrender, then we go to our needs, and then we move to the fourth part, and that's forgiveness. Forgiveness. He said, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven. So as now we come to the Lord, and here we repent of any known sin and just thank the Lord for his forgiveness. You know, I remember the, the story about a job application that had a question that read, have you ever been arrested? The applicant printed the word no in the space. And then the next question was a follow-up to the first. It asked why. And the guy, not realizing he didn't have to answer this part, uh, wrote an honest and rather naive uh, answer. He wrote, I guess it's because I never got caught. <laughs> Listen, I want to be able to say <laughs> before the Lord that there is no known sin in my life. I'm not hiding anything. I don't want to be able to say, yeah, I'm good. I just haven't been caught. No, no, I, want to, I don't want there to be any sin in my life. I don't want to be hiding anything. And so if there's anything here, I bring it to the Lord. If there are things that I'm unaware of, I ask the Lord to bring it to my mind. And often, I don't know if it's just me or anyone else, but I often find that out of this time, there are things that the Lord reveals that I need to rectify in my relationship with my spouse and my children. It's like all the time, like, ah, oh, I gotta go back again. Ask forgiveness again. And again, he just brings those things up in my life. But there'll be times when he, he, he reveals place in your life. You know, the way you spoke to this person, the way you treated that person, that, that, that was not me. I want you to rectify that situation. So it's here, we, we receive his forgiveness. You might end up out of that time going and asking others for their forgiveness. But it's here we also, in this forgiveness piece, we also extend forgiveness. It says, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven. It's a good question to ask this, Lord, is there anyone that I need to forgive? Is there anyone I have not forgiven? In fact, one of the things that uh, Pastor Larry Stock still taught me, and I, I've just loved this, was choosing to forgive in advance those who might hurt or offend us during the day, before it ever happens. So in the morning, I'll just say, you know what? I choose right now in this moment that I'm gonna forgive whoever might hurt me or offend me today. I already choose right now in this moment that I have forgiven them. I'm gonna forgive them. And I just found that as I've started doing that, when people hurt me, do something that might offend me, I'm more apt to forgive them on the spot because you know what, I, I've already made the choice this morning. I've already forgiven you. The Lord's already softened my heart. I've made a choice that I'm gonna forgive. In fact, if you will just ask the Lord to soften your heart towards those who might hurt you, even in the future, and choose to forgive in advance, I think you'll find that you won't end up carrying around and hanging on to so much junk when people hurt you because you will end up forgiving in the moment because you've already made a choice. So start with praise, move to surrender, needs, and then we get to forgiveness. And then the last part is just, we just I just call this part battle. We do battle. He said here, lead us not into temptation and deliver us from the evil one. You know, one of the things I learned from sports growing up is that the game is not won and lost on game day. 
you know, the game gets played on game day and there's a winner declared on game day, but it's won and lost in the preparation. And it's usually the person or the team that has prepared in advance that gets the win on game day. I remember one time in college, our basketball team was playing a team from Florida. And we got out there and we start calling our plays and their players started saying, they were reciting our play to us as we were saying it, saying this guy's going here, this guy's going here. I'm like, these, these, these guys know exactly where we're going in our plays. They have prepared and they beat us because they were prepared. It's won and lost in the preparation. And I want you to understand that every day, you know this, but every day a battle is being waged. There is a spiritual battle going on. And how you fare in that spiritual battle comes down to how you prepared. Have you prepared yourself for battle for the day ahead? The reality is there is not one of us listening here today who is beyond falling into temptation and making some really poor decisions. Not one of us. Just look around. You see it happen all the time. It seems just normal to hear about somebody who you thought was, oh, they, man, this person would never do that, who falls into a scandal. I don't want that to be me. I don't want that to be you. And so that comes down to, I'm gonna prepare myself for today because every day is a battle. And so we pray, pre prepare, prepare by coming to the Lord. And again, out here I just ask him, Lord, would you protect my mind today? Would, would you protect my eyes? I don't wanna be looking at anything I don't need to be looking at. Would you protect my ears? I don't need to be listening or hearing anything I don't need to be listening or hearing. Would you protect my heart today? And then I just take authority in resisting every attack of the enemy against my family, against my home, my health, my finances, my ministry. I just say no in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood over my house, my family, everything, and just say no. I speak life over this household. And I cancel any assignment of the enemy against my family in the name of Jesus. So you take authority and you resist the enemy. And you know, if you have a business, you might include your business in there. So there you go, okay, here, that, there it is. That's the Lord's prayer pattern. It's pretty simple. You just start with praising him, you move to surrender, bring him your needs, forgiveness, and then you just do battle. You prepare for the battle ahead. And listen, that is, you can do that pattern in 10 minutes, like you can do it in five minutes, or you can do it in 55 minutes. You, you can get into it as much or as little as you want. So I, I hope you'll use it and let it guide your prayer time during this fast and beyond. Simple way to begin praying. Now, I want to talk to you briefly as we close here. Uh, I just want to talk about a few specifics about the fast, because tomorrow we kick off our 21 days of prayer and fasting. And the word that the Lord put on my heart, maybe I should say picture, or I'll just say it's a word. The, Lord, the word the Lord I felt, the word I felt the Lord put on my heart for this fast uh, is the word acceleration. You know, there was a, about a month back, uh, a friend of mine here at Northwoods, uh, he, we were having breakfast together as I meet with some guys, and uh, he had just uh, got a brand new electric truck. And he let me, graciously let me hop in and drive this thing. And I learned a couple things about, I don't have, elect, I never driven an electric car before then. But I learned a couple things about electric cars. That electric cars, they, they don't have the gas pedal anymore. It's called the acceleration pedal. And that when you hit the acceleration pedal in an electric car, I don't know, I'm not a car person. I don't know what it is, but you get instant torque to the tires. I mean, that thing can accelerate like nobody's business. I mean, I was ripping it off the line going down Knoxville, all right? I mean, it's just a stoplight, like, boom. I mean, you could... I don't know, you can put up against any sports car. It would blow that thing away. I mean, it was amazing. You could accelerate quickly. And so with that electric truck picture in your mind, I want you to think of prayer and fasting as being similar to the acceleration pedal 
in your relationship with the Lord. And as you hit that pedal this year, as we join our hearts together through prayer and fasting, I believe there are gonna be some things that the Lord wants to accelerate, that he's gonna accelerate the rate at which we see breakthrough in this church and in our lives. And you know, I, I'll be honest, every year when it comes to the fast, I, I don't, I'm not like, yes, so let's, let's go, 21 days, I'm gonna stop eating, I'm gonna eat salad, it's gonna be great, like, that's not me. I'm always just kinda like, ah, okay, all right, we're gonna get into this thing. And, but you know what, when the Lord put that word on my heart, it was, I, I can't say that I was like, yes, let's go, but I was like, you know what, I, I, I'm ready, I'm ready. I, I don't necessarily look forward to not eating or just eating these things, but I'm ready because you know what? I, I, I do have some things in my life that I wanna see the Lord accelerate. And I believe he wants to do that in your life as well. And so to go along with the fast, we'll be releasing daily devotional videos. You know, we've done this in the past and we're gonna release them every Monday through Saturday. Okay, every Monday through Saturday and then Sunday obviously We'll be back here. And in those devotional videos, we're gonna be diving deeper into prayer. So this week, you know, we've, we've talked today about here, here's how you pray. Now this week in the, each devotional video, we're gonna talk about the six essentials of prayer. So it's gonna kind of go along with what we're learning on Sunday. And you can find those devotional videos on our app or at northwoods.church slash house of prayer. And then as always, beginning of the year, if you don't have a Bible reading plan, I would encourage you to get involved in a Bible reading plan. We're doing the one year chronological Bible plan this year. If you haven't started, just jump in and pick up where you are. You don't have to go back and I, have to, I missed you know, January 1. You could start now and you'll just end January uh, 8th of next year, right? So get involved in a daily Bible reading plan. Now again, I just real briefly here, let me cover the basics. For some of you, this is like, this is gonna be review, but if you've never fasted before, let me just real quick touch on this. So what is fasting? Okay, biblical fasting is refraining from spiritual food for a spiritual purpose. Now, some may choose to abstain from other things besides food, and that's fine. But biblical fasting is refraining from food for a spiritual purpose. So this isn't dieting and detoxing. That may happen as a side benefit, but it's about taking the time you would normally spend eating and spending that time with the Lord, okay? Then why do we fast? Mainly to draw near to the Lord, but also to seek the Lord for breakthrough. Like I said, it's like hitting the acceleration pedal. So maybe you have a need you've been praying for, you just haven't seen the answer. You should fast and pray. Maybe there's a broken relationship in your life that seems beyond repair, fast and pray. Maybe there's a decision before you that you can't seem to gain clarity on, fast and pray. And maybe there's a sin pattern in your life you can't seem to break, fast and pray. Okay, so that's what fasting is, It's why we do it. How do we fast? Normal fast is abstaining from food and drinking only water and 100% juice. Partial fast, you can just, you know, the Daniel fast, abstain from meats, bread, sweets, wines, and soda, and eating only vegetable and fruits and drinking water. And again, we call it the Daniel fast. Again, all these things will be online. So what I'm covering, like, man, it's a lot. Just go online on our website. I'll give you all the basics of fasting. And let me just say this. If you have any medical condition or on medication that would make it difficult or dangerous to go without food, uh, do not try this without speaking to uh, a doctor. If, you know, if you're living in your parents' home, I'd encourage you to talk with your parents about, hey, this is what I'm thinking about doing. What do you think? So that's kind of the basics. Now, some might choose to fast from other things, but biblical fasting is fasting from food. And ultimately, there's no hard and fast rules for what you decide. The key is to make it meaningful between you and God. And so as we enter this fast this year, we're gonna enter by coming to the Lord's table and taking communion together. So if you have your elements with you, you can take those out now. And I wanna read you a passage as you're taking those out, out of John chapter six. This is Jesus speaking. And he said, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. That sounds kind of like, whoa, what are you saying there? He said, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. 
Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them, just as the living Father sent me, and I live because the Father. So the one who feeds on me will live because of me. I want you to say what, what Jesus, I want you to hear what Jesus is saying here. He's saying that as we, he's not just saying, I want you to physically come and, and eat my body and drink my blood, right? But Jesus is saying that there, there's spiritual nourishment for us as we come around the table. That as we come around the table and we partake of the bread and the wine, there is a spiritual nourishment that takes place. And so as we go into this fast, we think about, oh man, I'm not gonna be eating. I want you to think about this. Jesus said, I want you to feast on me. As we go into the fast, think about fasting as a time for feasting. I'm gonna step away from the table and I'm gonna feast on you, Lord, because you are the one who sustains me. And as we come to the communion table, reminded of his death, but we're also reminded that he is the one who sustains us. And so you can take that top layer off. The Bible says that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake together. And then it says that after supper, he took the cup and he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. So let's partake together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, church, I, I want to close just a little bit differently today. Um, I felt as we were worshiping that the Lord wanted us to close by praying for children today. And so, I, you know, I've just found that many times that I've seen the Lord target children during a fast and do amazing things in the lives of children. And so if you are a parent here today and you have um, children who are college age and down, I wanna ask you to stand right now because we wanna pray for you. And I believe the Lord wants to do something special in the lives of your children during this fast. So I wanna encourage you to lean into him. And now for the rest of you, I want to ask you to, I want you to look around and if you see someone standing, I want you to just, I want you to, if they're near you, I want you to stand up and I just want you to place your hand on them. If there's no one standing near you, you just extend a hand towards them, okay? It might help if, if you're a parent, just put your hand up, all right? Just put your hand up if you got, so people can see you. If, just make sure there's, everyone has a hand on them. If there's no one around you, just extend a hand towards them. So Lord, I thank you that you, you care not only for every person represented here, but you care deeply for the children and the students represented by parents here today. And Lord, I pray that during this fast that you would touch every child and student represented by parents here today in a special way, Lord. I pray your blessing. We pray your blessing over those children. I pray if there are children and students who are, are walking, uh, walking away from you, Lord, I pray that they would turn back to you. Lord, I think of Samuel. That when he was young, he began to learn how to hear your voice. Lord, I pray that you would teach children, that they would be sensitized to your voice, Lord. And I pray you would raise up giants in the faith, Lord. That there would be students who say, I don't care what the world says, I'm gonna live for Jesus Christ. 
We ask for that boldness, Lord. And I pray that even while they're young, they would begin to seek you with all of their heart, Lord. And Lord, we pray your blessing over these parents. And Lord, I also just, on my heart, if there's anyone here today that you know what, you're in, a, you're in a spot where you're saying, you know what, I would love to have a family. We've been trying, it has not happened. I just, Lord, I wanna pray, I wanna pray for you. Lord, I pray that if there's anyone here who has a desire in their heart for a family, I pray that as they lean into you, Lord, I pray you would give them the desires of your heart. We know that bearing children is a good thing. And so, Lord, I pray that you would open up the wombs of people in this room and listening online. And I pray, Lord, that this would be the year for people who are saying, I have longed to have a child. I pray this would be the year in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing, even in this moment. And I thank you for what you're gonna do during this fast. Pray you would accelerate things in our lives and that progress would come quicker than we ever thought. And so Lord, I thank you for that. I pray your blessing over every single person represented here today and listening online. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Come on, give the Lord praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done. Church, I love you. If you need prayer for anything, come on down front. We'll have the prayer team. If you're online, we'll have a prayer team there as well. Hope you have a great week, and we'll look forward to seeing you back next week.